Uh, the story starts with me traveling a lot and I was trying to learn German years ago and the landlord, I arrived at three o'clock and he said, you need to put your luggage down and rush next door to the cafe because it's so good there and they're gonna close. And I thought he was ridiculous. I just thought, what possibly could be so good about coffee that you need to rush? So I ignored him. And the next day I go to this little coffee shop and it was in a big bowl and I had a sip, I couldn't believe it. Coffee had never been that good for me. And, and everything changed that summer as I was taking German classes, I lived in that cafe. So I got this real passion for that. Uh, they gave me a little letter of introduction to their friend James back in London, who turned out to now be the biggest celebrity on, on coffee. Uh, and everyone laughs that I had a personal introduction to James Hoffman, um, who spent the day with me at the time. And I just thought, coffee people are really nice. I love this thing. That's always driven me. I absolutely love cooking. And I wanted to work in food my whole life. I worked in a restaurant when I was young and the work is too hard. There's too many people who are talented competing. And so I went into technology and I always wanted to come back to this real thing of food. For 20 years, I've had Silicon Valley companies that I'd say are virtual, which is to say they're websites or software programs. And that makes a lot of money, but it's not very satisfying because you never really meet people, you don't affect their lives. The thing about coffee is that it's the way of choice for much of the planet to wake up and to start their day. I love that. So I'm gonna separate coffee, which is what people mostly know. You've got Nescafe, you've got pour overs, and those are not too hard to make good coffee. Espresso was invented by the Italians. It's part of the steam age and involves high pressure and machinery. And you have this little coffee puck and you have the equivalent of three adults standing on that little point. 140 pounds per square inch on this little thing. And so if there's any defect, any weakness in that coffee, it'll crumble. And that's what makes coffee made the espresso style so difficult because what makes coffee sour is when it's slightly uneven and water starts to shoot through. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so difficult. But when you've got something under that high pressure, it's very hard to see what's going on. That's why we have these fancy grinders and, and the tablet here is to be able to peek into what's happening in this compressed thing. As an entrepreneur, the key is not to think too much about the future. If you think about the future, you'll never do anything because the difficulties, the likelihood of failure is so high. You just solve this week's problems. I got into coffee and I spent a bunch of money once and then again to try and make good espresso and I failed. And after two years, I sold all my equipment that was back to my Nespresso machine. And I just thought, why am I so bad at this? And I thought, Maybe it's because I just haven't been educated. And eventually I found someone to stand by me and train me, and then I started to make good coffee. Mm -hmm. And the reason the Italians make the world's best coffee for many people is because there's so many people there who know how to make good coffee mm -hmm. that they can stand by you and teach you. Mm -hmm. But the Italians haven't spread that knowledge. And so what I wanted to do was make a coffee machine that was like having an Italian right next to you saying, that's good, that's not good. Well, the modern equivalent of that is a tablet. So imagine that you've got an expert Italian on the tablet saying, that's good, John. Mm, don't do that, John. Um, and very quickly, you start to make good coffee because of that help. My previous company was software for running communities. So I knew something about it. I come from a world where I try to think of, there's people who just want to make the coffee and there's people who want to become world experts. And then the trick is, how do we get one to help the other. So there's 1% of our customer base who knows how to do something new in coffee and who knows how to program this to make a really good coffee in the style of something. Mm -hmm. And so when you get this machine, those experts have already done their recipes and all you have to do is press the button and say, this guy Damien in Australia, I've heard he's good. I don't know what he's doing. I don't need to know, I just choose Damien's recipe, I hit the espresso icon, it does Damien's thing. And if it tastes bad, 
you get on the form and we ask you to take a photograph of the tablet and we say, here's the problem. For example, you have to get the grinds just right, not too coarse, not too fine, right? If it's too coarse, the water just pours through. If it's too fine, it doesn't come out at all. And so getting that right, we tell you you want your espresso to come out between 20 and 30 seconds. So if it's less than 20 seconds, too fast, more than 30 seconds, probably too slow. So as soon as you get within those two, immediately your coffee is going to taste better. So of the 11,000 customers, about 6,500 of them are on the forums active. So it's a big part is to participate or at least get help through that. Of the recipes that are on this machine, only about 10% of them are from the staff here. The other 90% are the community. Jonathan Gagné, he's a physicist in Montreal. He's written two books. I can't hire him. So initially, so he bought the machine, and then he wrote a paper with a new theory. And I read it, and I didn't understand it at all, because it was full of mathematics. And then he tried to program it, but he wasn't very good at programming the coffee machine. But then I saw that, and I thought, okay, you've translated your mathematical paper into an attempt on the coffee machine. I'm good at the coffee machine. So then I was able to understand what he was trying to do and make that. So it was a collaboration between Jonathan Gagné and me. He did the physics and the theory. I made it work on the machine. It's really rewarding because I come into this some talents, but I'm not a world leader in anything. But if I can get world leaders like that, then it, it amplifies me and my, my little skills become impactful because I was able to collaborate with someone like him. But it also means we have to be honest that this machine is not finished. It's, it's a potentiality. Like a computer is never finished. There's new software every year. This is essentially a computer that makes coffee. The name of the company is Decent Espresso. It's not most amazing espresso, techno espresso. It's decent because it's what you want in the morning. You don't want to have the most earth-shattering coffee ever when you just woke up. You just want to wake up nicely. You want it to be trustworthy and reliable. And let's just aim for that. For me, the, the road to success for this company is attracting much more talented people here to work on this than we could ever hire. What I do is I just need to be technical enough and smart enough and have an exciting enough vision to get talented people to come. That's, that's what I try and do, is to, to explain a vision and a direction and get a good team together and then let them be as good as they can be. What I mean by that is the best people in the world, they already have jobs, they have lives, they're anywhere on the planet. And so I have to articulate a vision, but I also have to make something that is now useful to them so that they get involved. Those people don't want to just donate to some company their intellectual property or their efforts. So I have to meet them further than halfway. I have to make them want to, to participate. And to do that, we have to be really open. So all the CAD, which is to say the whole design of this, is free and open on our website. You click on it and you can download what are called step files of everything. And you could build your own machine from all that. The software on the top, which I originally wrote, that's open and free too, and everyone can download it. And people do plugins. Today I got a plugin that uh, tells Google Home when to turn the machine on so it can turn on with your wake alarm, for example. And I didn't have to do that. Someone in Silicon Valley did that. That only happens because we're open. And, and they feel like they'll be respected, but also they can see that we're looking for that collaboration and they'll have a big impact. We have attracted quite a few competitors, and so I know there's one company in Chicago, and another, and two companies in China, mm -hmm. and what they did is they copied how this machine looked. What's most interesting about this machine is not how it looks, but what it does. And so they release these coffee machines that look like us, but then they miss the point, which is, to make it open and to, to make it bigger than just you. And they haven't been successful yet. Uh, there is a new competitor on the horizon, I won't name them, but they're very um, honest about having been inspired by us. And that's very flattering. It's a small company and they did a Kickstarter and it was very successful. 
And what it's caused me to do is spend the last nine months rewriting the software <laughs> because these kids are good and I need to up my game. And I would say it's forcing us to um, not just rest and be content. Other people are coming in and saying, I like what John's done, but I can do better. Well, if they do, well, we're out of business. So we've got to keep up. Italian culture of coffee is almost like Buddhism to the Thai. It is integrated. And if you go to Italy and you meet an Italian and you say, I just want to have an espresso, they won't let you just drink it. They want to lecture you and explain its importance into Italian culture and what this ritual is. It's, it's not a product to them. It's really part of their culture. And they all go out for their, their coffee. So we don't sell many machines to Italy because they have a culture of going to the corner cafe two, three, four, or five times a day, paying about one euro, and having an expert make a coffee for them. And the price is really low because people are buying so much coffee. If you try to charge a euro 30, you'll have a protest outside. But that has now been exported and turned into something else. And this whole Starbucks coffee culture of sitting in nice furniture and sipping an espresso with your laptop, you put a little pinky in the air and we drink it slowly while we read our email and watch YouTube. That is not Italian. That is not Italian. That's a something else. And the Italian approach is you walk up to the bar, power smoke a cigarette, drink your espresso, back to work in 15 minutes. It's kind of interesting because the Italians have the slow food tradition. And when you look at them and how they drink coffee, there's nothing slow about it. It is called espresso for a reason. If you look at the competitions in the coffee business, so what's called the World Barista Championship, for example, um, Hong Kong figures over and over in the very top. And what just finished um, Don Chen, I believe, is number six. And we're just a little small place. And I think he's come in number two. Capo Chu is also come in number two. Um, when we first moved here and we were in Wan Chai, um, uh, Espresso Academics was in the top 10 best coffee houses in the world right there. And then Capo had a uh, cupping room, and I think there were three coffee places actually down Swatow Street in Wan Chai that were all world class. So the level was up here. And Asians kind of dominate coffee, and certainly in latte art, total domination. I was born in the UK, despite my accent being American. I, I was born in the UK and raised in France, and then eventually went to America. I felt Americans had a lack of respect for the craft of making things because I had worked on things by hand a lot in my life. And so I wanted to come to Asia where things were made and live here and actually form a partnership. So that's why we're here in Hong Kong to try and have that partnership between that Western drive to create new things and that uh, this drive here and Chinese culture of making things. In America, everything's top-down. The, the bosses meet and then they tell everyone what to do. Top-down management. You try that in Hong Kong, it doesn't work. What does work in Hong Kong is to say, here's the goal. We all want to go in that direction. And then people will talk to each other and decide how to get to that goal. Once you realize that, you realize that the Hong Kong culture is really startup friendly if you're willing to give up control and hire good people and get them motivated and we all move together. Fundamentally, we chose Hong Kong because we want to live here. When you're going to be on a project for a decade, you have to wake up well rested, happy to be there, ready for the next day. Otherwise, you won't last. And I really got along well with the temperament, the personality of Hong Kongers uh, because I felt very at home. That more than anything. Mm -hmm. 本生活落科技，銀華 Dash K。